Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how to transplant common milkweed. It is widely known that the monarch butterflies depend on milkweed to lay their eggs for their annual migration. Decline in common milkweed plants is likely one of the major causes of declining monarchs over the years. While there are many different milkweeds and members of the Asclepius genus, today we will be focusing on one of the more common forms, appropriately named common milkweed, Asclepius sirica. If you have a colony on part of your property and you want to jumpstart a second, this video is for you. I'm going to show you how to identify and safely transplant one of these plants to start a new population. So in the video, we're going to cover ethics and legalities, how to identify the plant, the procedure to safely move a plant, and where you should transplant a new one. So, all right, let's look a little closer. Okay, before I get into the how-to, we need to talk about legalities and ethics for removing a plant, because I think it's entirely foreseeable that someone may try to use this information for poaching, so I want to cover this. It is not legal to dig up plants from property you do not own. We're not talking about grabbing a couple seed heads from a roadside. This is removing an entire plant. So if you happen to see a large patch of milkweed growing along a fence line somewhere, you really need to go ask the landowner or farmer for permission. If you explain your purpose and promise not to leave any holes or damage the property in any way, then they're probably going to let you do it. Common milkweed doesn't have any monetary value for them, and people generally like to do a good thing, such as helping the monarch butterfly. And it should go without saying that you should never just go randomly steal plants from anywhere, especially not state parks, national forests, anything like that. When it comes to ethics, it's generally not ethical or moral to just dig up plants from the wild. Certain species of plants are close to extinction, such as trillium and other orchids due to habitat poachers. People who come in and dig up that pretty flower they saw when they are on a hike yesterday often end up killing it. There's many reasons for that, such as symbiotic relationships, mitochondrial, or just plain inexperience. That being said, common milkweed can be quite prolific and abundant. And while growing milkweeds from seed is easy, and is probably my preferred way to propagate them, it is a slower start and can be difficult for new seedlings to overcome competition. Established uh, meadows, ditches, and all that, they can shade out tiny seedlings and they'll never make it. A rhizome start gives you a larger plant that can compete with most grasses and goldenrod right out of the gate. So if you're going to attempt this, make sure the population you want to borrow from is large, at least 10 or 20 plants. A general rule for harvesting anything from the wild is to only take 10% or less. Common milkweed spreads via seed and rhizome roots, so taking a single rhizome start from a patch of 10 or more plants shouldn't affect the primary colony. In my situation, I live in a neighborhood with an HOA that owns some extra land, aka a power line cut and some other retention areas. I have permission to do this, but let's look more closely at this. In this power line cut, you can see I'm standing in some mowed grass, but power, part of the power line cut is mowed every single week, and that happens to have some milkweed plants. You can see over in the tall area that's not mowed, there are some other plants over there which send out thick rhizome roots and propagated these new shoots. Well, these little milkweed plants that I'm, you know, in the mowed area are never going to flower. They're never going to support a monarch. They're just fodder for a lawnmower. So these are what I'll be taking. And if you're watching this, thinking about transplanting common milkweed to your yard, remember that it's going to spread in your yard too. So just be aware of that. And I'm showing you a method that I found good success with. But nothing is guaranteed. Sometimes the rhizomes can break when, into smaller pieces when you're pulling them out. Accidents can happen. So although these are generally tough plants, nothing is guaranteed. Be gentle and careful. I'm guessing most people watching this already know how to identify the plant. But uh, if not, you want to look for these kind of leaves um, on mature plants. They'll be 8 inches long by 3 inches wide. And they're going to be paired along the stalk, known as opposite. It's generally going to be a single stalk coming from the ground, but there are a couple of look-alike plants that grow near milkweed often, and the smaller versions of those plants can be easily confused for common milkweed. Those two plants are pokeweed and dogbane, and let me show you what it is and how you can differentiate them. For young plants, dogbane leaves look very similar to common milkweed, because the common milkweed young plants, the leaves aren't fully developed yet. But what you will notice differences in is the branching. Dogbane plants have frequent branching, whereas common milkweed is basically a single stalk. If you have both common milkweed and dogbane present, uh, you might want to just avoid the area unless you're 100% sure that it's milkweed. 
But if you find a smallish plant that is branching, assume it's dogbane and move on. If you find one that has no branching and there's no dogbane nearby, then take it. For pokeweed, the seedlings in particular look similar to milkweed seedlings, but there is a tell here that's very easy to differentiate them. Common milkweed has paired leaves, or opposite leaves, up the stalk. Pokeweed will have alternate leaves, which are kind of staggered up the stalk. You'll have one on one side, then you go up and have one on the other, and it'll kind of just jump back and forth. That's the main way to tell them apart. And at the very end of this video, for the credits if you will, I'll take a short 10 yard, 10 feet walk and show you just how close dogbane, pokeweed, and milkweed grow next to each other. So you might want to see that. Okay, so now that we've found a patch, which plants do we want to take? Well, you'd want to take smaller plants, not the bigger ones. Smaller ones are most likely starting from the rhizome root, which means they're not going to have a tap root. That'll make them easier to transplant. Larger plants are harder in general. Plants with tap roots are much harder, so just avoid those. Also, never take a plant with buds that is flowering or has just flowered and is now making seed as it's harder to keep them alive. Also, this entire video exists as an article at our website, which I will link to below. It includes all the steps, graphics, uh, what to do, what not to do, all that information. So you might want to save it in your favorites if you need a quick reference. And also, if you enjoy this content or think it's useful, please give me a thumbs up as it really helps me out a lot. But all right, finally, let's get into how to do this. So you're going to need a spade, a small trowel, and a weeding tool like this can be helpful, and carry some moist paper towels with you. Make sure you also wear gloves when you're doing this because the sap can be particularly bad. It can irritate your skin and if you get any of that sap in your eye, it can cause some temporary blindness and really hurt. So don't touch it, don't get it in your eye, all that. To dig it up, you're going to have to plan on going three to five inches deep. The unobstructed rhizome roots are generally about three inches deep in my experience. But I recommend digging a 12 inch diameter hole, putting the plant that you're going to take in the center. This will help make sure you get enough of the rhizome root. We're going to cut with our spade a perimeter of about 12 inches with the plant in the center. Dig between vertical and 45 degrees and once you've gone the entire perimeter, we can try to carefully lever out the whole clump. Do this slowly and try to feel for any resistance. If you find resistance, try to figure out where it's coming from. Is it because the rhizome wasn't severed? If so, sever it now. You want to be in control of where that happens. Is there a taproot present? If there is, you may want to just let go and leave the plant for to stay there because it's more difficult to safely transplant. But once you've removed the clump, at this point you could actually just take this and go plant it somewhere else and plan on watering it frequently for a week or two. Just remember, you need to fill in your holes, so hopefully you brought topsoil with you. But if you don't want to lug the clump of dirt out, you can do what I'm going to show you here. I'm going to chip away at the dirt and try to expose the whole rhizome root. Find where the rhizome's running and know that it'll run a straight line to the plant. So all the dirt on the sides can basically be chipped away. A lot, oftentimes it comes off in chunks. In general, you need at least three inches of rhizome root for the plant to survive. So plan on getting at least that much. In my article on this topic, I have a study in there from University of Nebraska, I think it was, that found that if you had at least six inches, you pretty much guaranteed 100% success of growing a new plant. So there you go. But once you have the bare root exposed, wrap it up in the moist paper towel immediately. You really wanna do that because if the root dries out, the plant will likely die. Okay, now take the bare root home and plant it immediately into a container with moist potting soil. The container needs to be large enough to accommodate the rhizome root, so plan on having a decent sized one. And also plant it to the same depth that you took it from. If there's excess foliage on it, uh, remove it. So I'm gonna clip this one and leave it so there's only one set of true leaves. Um, you could have like more, two sets if you wanted, but it, the plant does not need the excess foliage to survive. Removing the excess foliage will help reduce the heat stress on the plant and let the roots focus on gripping the uh, potting soil better and establishing themselves. Next, you're gonna to wanna to put it somewhere that is mostly shady. I put my containers in a spot on the back of my house where they get maybe two hours of sunlight per day. This reduces the heat stress on the plant substantially and helps increase the chances of success. Care for it like you would any other flower pot, watering when needed. 
Sometimes after transplanting, the plant will die back to the ground. Don't be alarmed at this. It just happens sometimes and you should start to see new growth in two to three weeks. It's common enough occurrence where I don't even pay attention to it. It just seems to happen with milkweed. But once you see new growth, it's time to plant it out in the ground. And where should you plant common milkweed? Well, the best bet is full sun with well-draining soil. Look where it grows naturally, take it somewhere where it doesn't currently exist. So if you're putting a new population at the back corner of your yard, you know, as long as it's not a swamp you, and it gets some sun, you're probably okay. All right, it's time to review. So first things first, don't be a thief. If you want to get some plants from a ditch where there's a whole lot of them, go get permission from the landowner or farmer before you do anything. Second, follow the general harvesting guidelines, only take 10% or less and fill in any holes that you may leave. Third, plan to dig at least six inches deep and six inches from the stalk at an angle and cut the entire perimeter before you pull it out. Fourth, wrap any bare roots with a moist paper towel immediately. And fifth, as soon as you're able, plant it into a large pot with moist potting soil as quickly as you can. Then place it in a somewhat shady location for a couple of weeks or until you start seeing new growth. And lastly, when you go to plant it out, put it somewhere in the conditions that common milkweed likes to survive. And a couple other tips for this is make sure you've identified your plant correctly. Don't accidentally transplant dogbane or pokeweed. Although they're also native plants and important, you don't want to be grabbing the wrong thing. All right, so now I would like to show you just how close milkweed, pokeweed, and dogbane will grow together, which is why it's important to be able to differentiate the small plants. And if you're concerned about uh, having a spreading plant in your yard, you may want to check out my videos on swamp milkweed or butterfly weed, as they're really nice plants and they don't spread. I'll link them below and at the end. And okay, so that's pretty much all I have for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. It does really help me out a lot. And if you need a quick reference later on, check the article I'll link to below. It has a lot of those side-by-side -side visual comparisons for the seedlings. And you might have, find those pretty helpful. And also some of the references I mentioned are linked at the bottom there. And as always, if you have questions, please ask them in the comments. I really like trying to answer them. And you all have a good day.